K Crypto. K Crypto. Hi, and welcome back to K Crypto. I'm Monica, the co host. And I'm Peter Chung. So, Peter, you read the executive ordinance, and what are the key things to note? Yeah, I think there are four things mainly. Uh, mm -hmm. First, it talks about definitions of a virtual asset and a virtual asset service provider, or VASIP, mm -hmm. as, as some people call it. And secondly, uh, as a VASIP, what you need to do to register your business. And third, what are the requirements for the travel rule? And fourth, what measures the governments are taking to minimize the uh, side effects of implementing the executive ordinance? All the VASIP has to operate using real name verification accounts provided by banks. Right. So that's, uh, that's another important thing that's stipulated in the uh, executive ordinance. And uh, it talks about uh, who's el eligible to apply mm -hmm. for the real name verification account. Right. So it, that list is um, it's quite strict. Maybe some service providers may not be equipped to to meet all the requirements, but I'll just mention. Um, sure. So first of all, uh, they gotta be able to segregate customer funds from their own funds, uh, and also they have to have uh, ISMS certification, mm -hmm. which is a basically um, a certification for uh, making sure that. Uh, you know, service providers a certain level of a uh, information security standard, okay, gotcha. uh, and also should be should not be subject to requirements for non-compliance. Uh, and what it means is basically, uh, you should not be somebody with a criminal record or some record of, of having broken the law in the past. Or you also have to be able to keep a track record of uh, customer transactions. And then the last point is very important, mm -hmm. uh, is that uh, because the real name verification accounts can only be provided by the banks, right. right? So the banks has to examine you, do a due diligence on you, and mm -hmm. has to determine that you are capable of providing anti-money laundering process mm -hmm. internally at the level equivalent to the banks. Mm. So are there any exceptions? Uh, yeah, there are some exceptions. So the good news is that uh, if you are a service provider that doesn't have any touch point with a fiat currency, then you don't need the real name verification account. Okay, gotcha. uh, but still, you will have to register yourself with the FIU, uh, mm -hmm. the Financial Intelligence Unit, and follow all other anti-money laundering uh, procedures. Mm. Gotcha. What is the travel rule? Yeah, so travel. Are we gonna travel more? <laughs> <laughs> What's it about? I wish. Yeah, it's about time. I hope yeah. so. Well, travel rule is basically it's a rule that is recommended by the uh, uh, FATF or some people call mm -hmm. it FATF, which is uh, which stands for the Financial Action uh, Task Force. Uh, it's a international uh, organization that oversees anti-money laundering activities. So it doesn't have really anything to do with travel. That's right, yeah. Well, travel rule is just a name. I don't know who came up with it, yeah. but it's a name given to a rule that says um, any financial institutions, you know, in order to prevent uh, money laundering activities, will have to keep their information of the senders or receivers of the funds into their uh, service platforms. Okay. And uh, they are uh, basically recommending this to the uh, uh, the, the virtual asset service providers in all member countries. And Korea is one of the member countries of FATF. So gotcha. um, the Korean regulators decided to incorporate this into the executive ordinance. But then having said that, mm. um, there are some difficulties in actually implementing this at this point. Because for one thing, FATF themselves have, are still discussing the, uh, the specifics of how this should be implemented. Right. Uh, and secondly, um, because the industry is still quite uh, young and nascent, yeah. they haven't built the necessary infrastructure to track all these information mm. of the senders and receivers. So uh, what the executive ordinance says is that they will give a one-year grace period uh, from the time of uh, executive ordinance implementation. Gotcha. So, that it'll be, so that means that the travel rule will not be applied until March 25th of 2022. So we still have some time to study and find out what it's all about. That's right, yeah. Mm. yeah. But then they've decided on some minute details of how they will uh, apply that rule. All For right. instance, they said that the uh, travel rule be applicable to 
transactions exceeding 1 million won only, okay. uh, or it'll be applicable to transactions intermediated by the VASPs only. So if the transaction takes place between two individuals, for instance, you know, between myself and you, Monica, mm -hmm. um, we, we wouldn't have that trouble requirements. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so is there anything to minimize this impact? Yeah, so that was the last point, last of the four things that they've mm -hmm. talked about. And so this last bit is actually a bit political because I think that what they realize is um, by implementing this executive ordinance, a lot of small crypto businesses may be forced out of the, out of the business mm -hmm. uh, because they are not capable, financially capable of meeting all these requirements. Um, well... If Bitcoin pumps, <laughs> yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe that'll change. Yeah, <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, uh, so in order to minimize uh, these negative impacts, mm. potential negative impacts, mm -hmm. um, they said basically, or well, they they organize uh, or sponsor more public educations and press conferences and seminars in order to educate the industry participants about right. how this uh, ordinance will be. But that's great. Applied, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing they mentioned also is that. Uh, they were adamant that the ICO will remain mm -hmm. illegal in Korea. Right, gotcha. yeah, So, uh, I so don't know you got to still travel to the uh, seashells. Yeah, or to do that. that's right, or Singapore, or... Oh, yeah, Singapore, that's yeah, right. Yeah, other, some offshore mm -hmm. locations. Gotcha. Yes. All right, that's super interesting. Yeah, so, yeah, that's the... So, we'll see. Um, I, I think right, right now, actually, something I didn't mention here, but mm -hmm. uh, right now, they are in the process of uh, collecting feedback from mm -hmm. the industry participants on this executive ordinance mm. so uh that go that support that's scheduled to go on until the first week of december and then after that they might make some additional revisions mm. and some fine tuning some some minor details gotcha, gotcha. Uh, but that's where we stand right now sounds good all right thank you everyone for watching i hope you had an interesting time with us and uh, it was useful and don't forget to like and subscribe. And also, if you have any comments or questions that you'd like us to address, uh, please uh, leave them in the uh, section below and we'll be happy to pro provide answers for you. Ciao for now. Bye. Hey, crypto. Hey, crypto.